Hi, Greg here, your tea drinking hacker with today's tea of the day, which is a lovely imported um, chai tea, imported specially from India by a good friend Ross, a client. Um, this tea is heavy on the cloves, also smells some nice peppercorns in there. I'm having mine as a soy milk hot tea latte. Bottoms up, now on with the show. So, today we're going to talk about what is Vault 7 and why should you care? First, the what. Vault 7 is the code name of an alleged cache of tools that the CIA has created and sometimes curated, now posted in the public domain by WikiLeaks. Vault 7 includes weaponized exploits, malware remote systems, and lots more. Information also included is complete documentation how not to get caught, how to use the tools, etc. Included in the documentation was something called Fine Dining, which was a complete menu-based system for requesting specific custom pieces of malware based on the need and the platform being attacked. Before we delve into Vault 7, a few key points on the WikiLeaks release. A couple things. One, regardless of your opinion, about the legality or ethics of WikiLeaks and the information they have posted in the past. It has to be noted that in the past 10 years, not one single one of their documents has been proven as not authentic. This goes from the documents provided by Ed Snowden all the way to the more recent emails of John Podesta. All have been proven to be accurate in their content. Now, the actual code or programming that makes up the tools in Vault 7 consists of over 100 million lines of code. That's larger than the code base of Facebook. I say that to say this is clearly not a minor kind of an incidental operation. It took time and lots of resources like people and money. Next point, the release by WikiLeaks does not include the code or the details to actually run these tools. That information, including the actual lines of code, were blacked out in this release. That was done by WikiLeaks to allow the vendors of the exploited devices time to prepare a response, be it a fix or whatever they choose. Let's get into the features of Vault 7. Some of the features included in Vault 7 are included this pretty big one. That is the ability to tap iPhones and Androids so that data messages, voice notes, texts, etc. can be collected before apps like Telegram and WhatsApp, which pride themselves on being able to keep encrypted communications, before those apps can encrypt them, these tools had the ability to pull the data off there. So not even with those apps were you safe. Um, also mentioned in the features was the ability to infect control systems used in vehicles. At the moment, the release appears to only address consumer cars, but the methods could also easily be applied to maybe mass transportation or even self-driving vehicles in the future. Now, there's lots more features, but I'm gonna end on this one for today. Proximity hacking. Proximity hacks are used to gain access to non-internet connected or even air-gapped systems. That's systems such as power plants, um, police databases, even manufacturing um, factory floors. Often, these attacks would come out of that fine dining system that I mentioned above, distributed on a little USB stick, complete with decoy apps such as an AV scanning tool, maybe a game, a PowerPoint type presentation program, even a simple video player like maybe VLC. Think of all the times people are left unattended in, for example, a conference room or a, a waiting room. They could be armed with one of these USB devices and an infection could be done in mere seconds. And even if they're caught, they're armed with the excuse ready to go, oh, sorry, I was just looking uh, for my presentation or whatever have you. Now for the why. One of the big whys is what this shows us is that protecting against the biggest attack vector of the day, whether that's, you know, um, email or today, you know, it might be, you know, um, web traffic, that is absolutely not enough to protect yourself against, you know, people listening into your board meetings through the TV in your boardroom, for example. 
Another ginormous why would be, why would you care? Because Vault 7 also included a division called Umbridge. What is Umbridge? Umbridge was tasked to collect and maintain the library of attack techniques, malware, infrastructure, produced by other entities. Umbridge also not only increased the number of types of attacks in the arsenal, but they were tasked with, and this is key, collecting the digital fingerprints left behind by attacks done by others. Now, why would you want to collect the fingerprints of attacks done by others? So that you could realize when they're attacking. The trick with that is, this means that you need to care because as some experts in cybersecurity have been saying for a while now, we can no longer use fingerprints or technical details such as code, infrastructure, or methods used as a means to accurately attribute who hacked who. This is huge. This means we could now have false flag activities where we make it look as if X is attacking when it's actually someone completely different. We are literally in the wild, wild west of cybercrime. I'm gonna close with this question. In future posts, we're gonna talk more about, for example, how to address Vault 7. How do you fix this and other attacks like this in your environment? So comment below and let me know what would you like to talk about regarding Vault 7 next. Until next time, this is Tea Drinking Hacker. We're out. For more great content on cybersecurity, hacking, and tea, remember to click here to subscribe to Tea Drinking Hacker.